Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include Refugees fleeing EU crisis in record numbers EU finalises China solar panels subsidy probe Amazon lifts EU restrictions barring merchants from setting lower prices elsewhere EU coal demand starting decades-long slide plus ducks I'm Rick Timmis and this is the unit nightly news first from our homepage in the aftermath of the 2008 financial crisis hard-hit countries like Greece Ireland, Portugal and Spain are witnessing a spike in emigration rates as armies of the unemployed take to the road in search for work. Meanwhile, experts are concerned as to what effect this mass exodus will have on the 17-member economic bloc as governments try to jumpstart their fragile economies. The experts are concerned. Well, your concern is duly noted. Perhaps these experts could show some concern for the lunatic kleptocrats in the parliamentary ivory tower over in Brussels, who appear to have started out with a jolly poor standard of economic understanding, and worse still, they failed to maintain that standard. The European Commission concluded on Wednesday an anti-subsidy probe into imports of Chinese solar panels, which a top EU energy group said showed Beijing made massive illegal payments to its companies. The Commission declined to confirm the details, saying only that it had informed interested parties, including China, of its findings and they could now comment on them. Brilliant show of strength. Beijing gets accused of corporate bribery. The EU investigates but refuses to say anything. What was that word Mr Barroso used? Ah, yes, transparency. Retailers in the European Union can now set higher prices on Amazon than they do elsewhere online. According to the UK's Office of Fair Trading, Amazon is doing away with a rule that barred all companies offering goods through its marketplace services from advertising lower prices on other websites. The changes are said to go into effect immediately and come following a nearly year-long investigation into whether the practice was anti-competitive, though no decision was ultimately reached. Well, as per the previous story, really... I reported yesterday that the EU was quick to speak of its EU ships when it's not even apparently supposed to have a mandate for any EU military. It purports to be a trading bloc and yet refuses to manage and comment on trade through Amazon. And we're paying over £50 million a day for this privilege. European Union coal demand is on course for a decades-long slide from a peak last winter as the growth in capacity of renewable power outstrips new coal-fired plants. Across the European Union, a total of 28 gigawatts of old coal-fired capacity could come offline between 2012 and 2020, Deutsche Bank said in a recent report. Hmm... Well, let's not forget, it's been a favourable summer, much of the renewable is solar, and funnily enough, that is much more productive in summer. Predictions still stand for large rises in energy prices, and whilst improvements to reduce consumption have helped, the bottom line is the consumer is going to be paying much more for their energy going forward. Now that's where we've been able to make some inroads and we now have a discount programme which we are in the process of setting up that if all goes well could reduce the cost of your energy and basic utilities by as much as 25%. Drop us an email if you'd like to know more. Syria dominates everything at the moment. The human suffering on both sides is beyond imagination and must cease as soon as possible. I hold no brief for either side in that dreadful conflict, but this is how I see it. President Obama is facing a crisis. Suddenly, only France stands alongside him, supporting US military intervention in Syria. 
If I were the US president, the gurning face of Monsieur Hollande peering out at me from the world's newspaper would fill me with dismay. The answer surely lies with the United Nations, and if boots are required on the ground, they should be wearing blue helmets. The UN Security General Ban Ki-moon should be knocking heads together and making that forum function more effectively. If he can't, move over and let's have someone who can. In the meantime, we have a lame duck president and a dead duck prime minister. Well, who cares? Because for once, democracy works. Hat tips to Trevor Coleman for this article. The first of our new live shows, The Unit Critical Thinking, will begin on Wednesday the 2nd of October at 2pm. And all being well, Trevor will be one of the guests on our panel. It's a live interactive session. If you have a Google account, then you're welcome to join the show. Or you will be able to view the show live on the homepage of our website from 2pm. Today in our video library, Glenis Wilmot, MEP, addresses the Parliament as the European Commission President Barroso delivers his State of the Union address. In her one minute, she argues that with rising energy prices, rising unemployment and the increase in the need for food banks and aid across the EU, now is no time for complacency. It is time to get to work to stop the erosion of living and working standards that austerity has caused. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.